You ever notice how some people are a way bigger encouragement than others? Well, today on Daily Renewal, I want to share with you a principle that will help you be a bigger encouragement to those around you. Hello, everybody. This is Pastor Lyle, and welcome to Daily Renewal. You know, in this day and age, there's so many people, it seems, that are very discouraged. And, and often you'll run into people that uh, either bring you more discouragement or there's, there's the odd one who just seems to, when you're around them, they, they, they're, they're encouraging. They have an encouraging word or just being around them lifts you up. And, uh, you know, I, I think that, 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 that some of the keys that in life is uh, for us to be able to be the kind of person, if we've got Jesus in our life, we should automatically speak words that bring encouragement because you know God's done a work in our life. Uh, that being the case, though, I wanted to talk a little bit today about a real key principle that we saw working in Apostle Paul's life that I, I think if we focus on, will help us be an encouragement to those around us. The Bible says in Matthew 5, starting in verse 14, it says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So we have to understand that it's a big deal to God how we represent Him, how we shine the light of God into other people's lives. And one of the ways to do that is to fight off a lot of the discouragements in this world, and we do that by bringing encouragement. And the key, if we're going to really truly bring long-lasting encouragement to, to people's lives, is by having a, a transformed life ourselves. That to, 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 to relate to people that having a relationship with Jesus brings transformation. And from that, it brings encouragement and hope to other people. So the first thing we have to establish is that we are people that should be an encouragement to everyone. So I want to take a look today at uh, Apostle Paul addressing uh, the church in Thessalonica. Now, the church in Thessalonica, I'll give you a little bit of a background. Uh, like a lot of the churches that Paul had, had begun, uh, he, he, he set forth the plan of salvation, and he, he started a church there. And the people, as they began to follow, Paul would leave to go to other places, and other people would come in behind and try to undermine Paul's message, or even undermine Paul. Uh, and if you undermine Paul, you undermine his message. And uh, so Paul is writing this, this letter to them, and we're going to go through this a lot of, during the week, but I want to start off by showing you uh, a principle of encouragement that I think is major, a major key that, that we can use in encouraging other people. And we see this uh, in chapter 1, starting in verse 2, and this is what he says. He says, we give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers remembering without ceasing your work of faith, your labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of our God and Father. So we see here, the, the, the first thing, obviously, is that Paul starts off his letter with an encouragement. This church was going through, uh, yeah, they were going through a lot of confusion because people were trying to, as I mentioned a few, a few minutes ago, that people were trying to confuse the message on whether you should even trust Paul. But they, as a result of them actually trusting Paul, they were going through persecution. There was many things coming against them. And so they needed encouragement, just like all of us need encouragement. Well, Paul, the first thing he does, at the very beginning of this letter, is he decides that he wants to encourage them. So for us, encouraging people, especially in this day and age, is vital. You may think that everything's going good with people around you. People, there's a lot of times where people, you know, you know, it looks like things are going great, but everybody can use encouragement. And all through the scripture, we see that, uh, that, that the believers in Jesus Christ were quick to encourage one another. But that being the case, I think we all know that we, we, can, we all uh, benefited from encouragement. But Paul takes this a step further, and this is the principle that I want to show you. 
that if you really want to be an encouragement to somebody, there, there's something you need to realize. And I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story. You know, I, when I was a kid, uh, when we used to celebrate uh, Christmas when I was a kid, we had this tradition. And the tradition was that we would buy a box of chocolates and we would wrap it up. And if somebody ended up coming by that we weren't expecting, we would give them this gift of a box of chocolates. Now, you know, for me as a kid, uh, when I look at it, there were certain things that I wanted. And, and, every time, and, and I think this tradition was something that a lot of people did. You know, you have somebody unexpectedly show up, you give them a gift, and you open it up and say, oh, it's a box of chocolates. But as a kid, I used to look at this box of chocolates as being kind of a, nobody really thought about this kind of prize. You know, you, 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 you always enjoyed the box of chocolates, but there was something about it that just kind of made you feel like you were second rate. Like nobody really thought about you. You know, you were an afterthought, and that's why you got this. And, you know, I, I think that what Paul is showing us here, that if you really want to encourage somebody, don't treat them like a second rate box of chocolates. What does that mean? Well, if you want to really encourage somebody, you need to invest the time. And it's the same with, with giving gifts. Uh, you know, I'll use the same example. There's many times that when I give somebody a gift of some kind, the most fulfilling thing for me is when they open a gift and they look at me and they go, how did you know? How did you know this is exactly what I wanted? I mean, I've never told anybody. I've never really, really, really expounded this to anybody to know. But you, how did you know this is exactly what I wanted? That is the look of being encouraged when you see somebody react like that. Well, what was it that caused somebody to react like that? It was the fact that somebody else took the care. They invested in their lives. They invested the time to get to know them, to get to, 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 to feel how they think about things and to get to know what's important to them. And, you know, it's a lot different than to receive something that had very little investment in it. You know, for us, if we really want to be an encouragement to somebody, I'll give you another example. And this might get me in trouble. I'm, I'm hoping that I don't get some husbands in trouble with this one. But when, you're, when you say to your wife that you love her, if she asks you, how come you love me? Or why do you love me? You better have some answers other than, well, I just feel that way today. No, ask yourself. In some of the things, the people that you're trying to encourage, whether it's through giving a gift or telling somebody that you love them, is it just mere words? Is it a second-rate box of chocolates you're giving them? Or is there some really real thought put into this? Because if there is some real thought into your relationships with other people, and when you go to encourage them, and like Paul here, this is what he says. I mean, look at this. He doesn't just say, I give thanks for you guys. He said, you know, I give thanks for you guys. Oh, why are you thankful for us? Um, well, I'm just thankful. No, Paul goes further and he shows them. He says, you know what, you guys? I am thankful for you. And I'll tell you why. I'm thankful to God for you always. And, and he says, because I'm remembering uh, your, 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 your work of faith. I'm remembering your labor of love. And I'm remembering your patience, patience of hope in, in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of our God and Father. These were all things that were really important to Paul that he taught them. And now he's relaying back to, to them. He says, you know what? I'm thankful because I'm showing, he's showing them right now. I'm thankful that you not only heard what I said, but you picked it up and you're making it a part of who you are. And I can tell that it's important to you. So I want you to know that I am encouraging you and here's why. And I'm letting you know that uh, by encouraging you, I'm encouraging you because you're also an encouragement to me. And tomorrow I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. But for today, I hope you got something out of that today. You know, the idea of being a better encourager starts with you really caring. When somebody knows that you care, that is the biggest encouragement that you can ever give another person. It's not about what you give, but when you do care, it's amazing how you will be able to observe things that really are important in a person's life. Well, I hope you got something out of that today. If you did, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel. Uh, hit the like button below, and uh, you can also like us on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, also, uh, we just want to encourage you, if you are in the Kamloops area, feel free to drop by River City Church. We would love to have you, especially if you don't have a local church. 
Uh, so having said that, God bless you and have a great day.